Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. I want to share with you the project that I made for my Girl Scouts. As many of you know, because I talk about them all the time, I am a Girl Scout troop leader. I have a troop of girls, brownies, they are ages eight and nine. And in fact, this is their last year as brownies. They will be bridging to juniors. Twice a year, every year, we have Court of Awards or the Court of Honors, where the girls are officially presented with the patches, badges, and pins that they earned for that particular Girl Scout year. I like to make them something special for these presentations, something that can serve as a keepsake, and just something that's reflective and respectful of the amount of hard work and dedication that they put into earning their badges, patches, and pins. So this year, because it is their last year, and I can't even believe that, as brownies and because I know that it's been <laughs> quite the journey up until this point I mean these girls have come such a long long way I remember that very first meeting um, as daisies they were these shy little girls who you really couldn't get to say much and my 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 how they have grown and I absolutely adore them. It's like having a, a, a troop, a large troop of, of daughters. It's just amazing. They all have voices now. They all have very unique personalities. Um, they're not quiet anymore. <laughs> In fact, this year, um, since Girl Scouts is all about being girl-led, um, they started running their own meetings. So, you know, still with some guidance from the troop leaders, but the fact is that they have put in so much hard work into earning these badges and pins up to this point. And a lot of it was planned and coordinate it on their own. They came up with the projects, they came up with the ideas. So this was a really big year for them because this is, I feel like the first year that the troop was 95% girl led with only 5%, you know, input from from the troop leaders, which is what it's supposed to be all about, okay? So these girls created their own programs, they created their own agenda, they decided what they wanted to earn, and they did it. So I wanted them to have something special, something reflecting that journey. And I thought these little suitcases would be absolutely perfect. So here's one that is a finished product. And I'll show you what the finished product looked like before, or looks like before I go into how it is that I made this. Isn't this adorable? Look at this suitcase. I used brads. I created these straps. I inked the edges. I wanted to give it a very vintagey look. So that this is what I came up with. I'll find one here that doesn't have um, the straps so I can show you what the inside looks like. Plenty of room on the inside, as you can see, to house all of their badges, patches, and pins. Then it closes beautifully. Isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, um... This isn't necessarily a create with me type video because this is certainly not um, a project that I made from scratch. It is a project that I made using an amazing die. 
This is a Sizzix die. It is one of their scoreboards extra large dies. And this one's by Eileen Hall. And here is the item number if you might be interested. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. It's just, it's called, I think it's just called bag or suitcase. Okay. See it right there? Now, I got my particular die cut from Overstock at the time that I purchased this die, which was a little bit ago, and it's still available. Um, it was the cheapest um, uh, price overstock that is had it for the cheapest price i think i paid um i want to say i remember i know it's under it was under 25 dollars i'm thinking 22 and change if i recall correctly um but i know that of all the places that were offering the dye at the time overstock was the cheapest so if you're interested in getting this dye i would encourage you to just do a google search and do a little bit of research and see where you can get it at the cheapest price um it's definitely still available because i recently did a search just to make sure it was available before i talked about it so if you're interested definitely definitely look it up so this is the dye that i used here is the actual actual die cut itself okay i cut that particular die from um matte board and this is the map board that I used. It is a 6 by 13 map board. I find that that's the perfect size for this particular die because it is a larger die. There's the item number. And this particular pack, I got six sheets of the map board. Um, and I recall paying, five, I believe it was $5.99 for this. So essentially a dollar board it might have been a little cheaper um, and I do believe that I got it from um, the Ellison website um, but again just google it and you'll find that a lot of images come up with different price points and just find what's the cheapest and most uh, reliable source I'm sure you'll have no problem finding it and here's the actual board itself map board and I got it in white I know this map board, I believe, also comes in black. I'm, I, if I recall correctly, it also comes in black, but I wanted the white, so here's the white. The particular paper that I used for my suitcases was this Downton Abbey uh, paper pack that I picked up from Tuesday morning, and I showed this in one of my haul videos. There it is. And it is gorgeous paper. It is double-sided paper, so it was kind of hard for me to choose which side to make the outside of the suitcase and which side to make the inside. But, you know, I managed and I did use up quite a bit of this paper, which I'm always happy to use uh, paper from my stash because God knows I got plenty of it, right? <laughs> so what I did was I pulled out the sheets. They are 12 by 12 sheets. I cut them down to the size of the map board right and i put at least for me i mean i suppose you could cut the map board and then cover it with your paper but the more efficient way to do it i thought was to basically just put the decorative paper on the map board and then run it through the die so i don't have to worry about fussy cutting down the road so i took that 12 by 12 sheet I essentially, <laughs> if I recall correctly, just cut it in half, right? Because it's 6 by 13. And if I have a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I just cut it in half, I'll have a perfect panel for each side. It doesn't matter that it's a little short in terms of the, the um, height of the paper because it, it, it fits the die. So it works for me. So what I did was after I uh, cut the paper in half, because it's double-sided paper, I just adhered one side of the paper pattern on one side of the map board, and then on the other, right, whatever pattern was on this side, I just made sure 
to flip it over and have it on the other side. So I get good use of both patterns. So let me go ahead and adhere this here. This is always the hardest and the trickiest part for me, right? Getting this, <laughs> getting this off. So yeah, my girls are bridging. I'm like, I still can't believe it. I can't believe it. I've had these girls since they were daisies and I feel honestly like they just bridged to brownies and here they are getting ready to bridge to juniors. It just, it boggles the brain. That's all I have to say. It boggles the brain. So I put some double-sided tape there and I'm also going to use some um, wet adhesive as well. Not too much because I don't want the paper to get all crinkly and, f and, and messy, but I do want um, a nice thin layer so that it will adhere well. And this is that um, Martha Stewart Crafts glue that I picked up also from Tuesday morning at that phenomenal price. I have started using it and I absolutely love, love, love it. It works really, really, really well. Now, when I adhere this paper, I want to make sure that it lines up with the paper that I put on the other side. You see how there's a little gap here and a little gap here? I wanna make sure that, you know, on the other side of this, that I line that up so um, they match. Okay, so I'm gonna eyeball it. It's about here. Right? I'll turn it over and look. Yep, about there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that. This die is awesome. It cuts really, really well. Um, I will say, I will say this. I have been giving this die a run for its money. I have cut it and 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 cut it over again. More than 16 times, as you can imagine, because I've had so many suitcases to make. And um, towards the end, I found that it was there was one area of the die that was sticking a little bit and was damaging my paper a little but um easily resolved how did i resolve it i contacted overstock yeah even though it's been a while since i bought the die and they sent me a replacement can you believe that they are absolutely amazing they sent me a replacement and all i have to do is once that replacement arrive arrives is send them the one that I have, and easy peasy, no problem. So, here is my panel, and it's covered on both sides. I'm going to bring out my machine, and I have the Big Shot. And forgive the shadow, but that won't last very long. So I'm going to use my Big Shot. I'll move it to the side here. The die cuts, and I'm going to use two of the of these. Oh my gosh! All of a sudden, I forgot what these are called. <laughs> plates. Woo! We the plastic plates. Um, you can tell which one is the one I use for my all of my cutting, right? You see that one? That's the one I use for all of my cutting. I don't cut on that one. I usually pick one plate that I do most of my cutting on and make sure that I, I keep it that way. So I don't know if that's the OCD in me or if everyone does that. I don't like to see all my plates marked up, but hey, that's just me. Now, what I have figured out, because first of all, this is the stack right here. It's going to be two plates, the two plates, and in between is going to be the die cut itself. So that's the stack, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is, here's the map board, and I'm going to place the map board here. Now, this is what I figured out. Whatever pattern is facing you when you're cutting, okay, whatever pattern is facing away from the die cut itself, like, in other words, this side is facing the die cut, this side is facing away from the die cut, 
whatever side is facing away is going to be the inside of the suitcase. Whatever is actually facing the die cut itself is going to be the outside of the suitcase. I want this gorgeous paper to be the outside. So I'm going to lay that against the die cut. And this pattern facing me is what's going to be the inside of the die cut. That's what I figured out, okay? And as you can see, I don't know that you can see. It might be hard to see. I don't think you can see. Um, yeah, there it is. Just make sure your pattern paper is lined up with where the cuts are going to be okay and honestly even if it's a little off i was okay with that because i inked the edges anyway but so far i've been doing a really good job of keeping everything lined up so there's the stack right here's a plate the die cut the mat board on top of it and then one more on top of that i'm going to run this through my machine and i'm going to try to do this without shaking the camera <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm going to run this through just gonna hold on to this and it cuts beautifully there we go and i only need to run it through one time okay let me move this Okay, and we'll see how this cut. This cut beautifully. Here are the different pieces. Here's another piece. And then we have that piece. And as you can see, it also cut. Let's see, yep. It cut every little detail is cut out. So I absolutely love, love, love this die. Let me just poke that out. There we go. Gorgeous, right? Perfect. So this will be the outside. As you can see, once you start folding the edges in, and I'll show you how to assemble this. This will be the outside. This will be the inside. So those are the pieces this, that we, this is what we're left with. I don't know. I have a bunch of these. <laughs> I think it's trash. Um, I'm trying to resist the urge to hoard this, but I think I should just trash it, right? I should just let it go and stop hoarding it. <laughs> I try not to hoard scraps, but sometimes it's really, really hard. Um, let me move all this to the side. Let me pull my seat in and let's start assembling this. The pitter patter of little feet or not so little feet that you hear in the background is my dog. Not Jinx, Jinx is asleep. This one is Braxton or B-Boy. He likes to keep his mama company. <laughs> <laughs> he's my late night um, company when I'm in the back room crafting um, he, he tends to follow me everywhere I go if he doesn't sleep until I go to sleep so and I'm not in a sleepy kind of mood which is why I'm crafting late tonight so now that I have all the working pieces okay these are the pieces I think the first thing I'm going to do is distress the edges and then perhaps in part two well let's see if I can get it in this video try not to make this video too long but we'll see how that goes so I'm just going to use some vintage photo distress ink I'm going to distress the edges of the cutouts because I just think it gives the suitcases a more um age vintage realistic look 
I think um, something as simple as inking edges makes a world of difference with the final presentation. It's a lot more work because it's an extra step, but I'm okay with that. Um, my husband, he makes fun of me when I do things like this. Um, he's like, babe, you make things harder on yourself with all these little details that nobody will even notice. I don't think that's true. I think most people notice. Um, it's like one of those things that when you do it, maybe people don't make comments about it or don't notice it. But when you don't do it, people might notice it, if that makes sense. Just like when you go to a wedding, um, most people don't notice the centerpieces. But if there was no centerpiece at the table, people would notice and say something about it, right? It's always like that. So it's just my style anyway, something I, I prefer doing, I think. Um, it's those little details that just lend so much um, beauty and just cuteness and a more realistic look to projects like this, like mini suitcases, paper purses, things like that. I mean, why not? And even if no one else appreciates it, I'm cool with that. I appreciate it because I know, you know, I wouldn't be happy um, with it unless I added these little details to it. To me, it'd be, it wouldn't be a finished, it wouldn't be a finished item. It wouldn't be finished. Nope. So that's why I do it. So these are the pieces. And so what I like to do, this is the top of the suitcase. Um, this is the bottom of the suitcase. This is a little handle and this is a little hinge. Okay, so if you look at a finished suitcase, there's the handle. Okay, here is this part right here. This is this part right here. So it adheres like that. Okay. And then that, once assembled, is going to adhere to the bottom. So let me just add some tape. I would encourage you to use, don't skimp on the adhesive, um, especially if the person you're giving this to um, is actually going to be using it quite a bit. And I know that my girls are. So I try to use super strong adhesive. In this case, I'm using this super, super stick red line tape. Okay, and I might even add a little bit of wet adhesive is what I've been doing. Um, just to make sure that it has a good stick. So I'm adhering some tape. So this piece right here has the part that folds. This hinge is going to be attached to the inside of the suitcase. So that's where you want to put your adhesive right there. Okay. And this hinge is going to be attached also to the inside of the suitcase like this. So I'm going to add a couple of strips of adhesive there. Okay. And this piece right here is actually the piece that's going to help keep the lid on the suitcase shut. Um, and even with this hinge, I still felt like I wanted to add um, the straps just to make sure that the suitcase really stayed shut because, oh my gosh, how horrible would it be if after I put all the badges and pins inside that somehow they manage to um, spill out. Oh Lord, that would not be a good thing. If I can get this, gosh, I think I might have, and you see how the paper is lifting here? That just was a spot that um, when I adhere the paper didn't stick. That's okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this glue. just to make sure that that doesn't become an issue down the road. So 
little things like that. I'm, I am my own quality control. <laughs> when I see something like that, I address it right away because how sad and unfortunate to put so much work and effort into a project only to have it fall apart because you didn't hear something um, correctly. So here's that piece where we adhered the tape on that little flip part. We're going to flip it over and adhere this. You don't want to put it quite to this, to this edge here because then it won't really do what it's supposed to do. You want it push it you want to push it back a little bit away from the edge I would say about there you see that space and just give it a good press that's going nowhere nowhere <laughs> so that part is done now this part like I said this is going to be the outside the suitcase piece I am going to put it together using um, you could just use glue right and glue what you do is you fold these pieces up like this and this is all already cut so you just have to carefully kind of manipulate the box and be careful you know patience is key here kind of push all this together and you could either glue this close like that right glue this together or you can use brads I do a combination of both so I am going to add a little bit of glue on the inside near where these holes are right here just add a little bit of glue I'm gonna do that Ooh. silly me look I put it on the wrong side it's a good thing you can just wipe, right? You want to put it actually on the outside because the reason you want it on the outside is you're going to fold it in like this. Like this. That's how you're going to fold it in, right? So you want this side to adhere to that side so the glue is going to be here. Right? <laughs> when it's not flying away. Okay, so we got that side. Let's put some here. Turn this up. Bring this up. See that? Press that together. Find those little brads. Here's a brad and you can use decorative brads. Whatever brad you have. I have these nice little silver brads. I'm just going to use that. I've been using this pack of brads here. I've had these forever in a day. Got a whole bunch of them. As you can see, I already used the, the light brown, dark brown, and finishing up the silver. I still have the white and the black. But this is a nice collection of brads. You have the super tiny ones, and you have the, the average size ones. So... I'm going to do the same over here, carefully manipulate this, do a little press to get the glue part to stick, and I'm going to add the brad, so I have the glue and the brad adhering this together, you see that, and I'm going to repeat that. here and here. So I'm going to add some glue there. Okay. Let me make sure this is in there. I'm going to make sure all the pieces are in. Okay, so I'm going to press right here where that glue should be. And I apologize for the ink <laughs> on my fingers. My hands are looking a little bit messy because I've been crafting. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same on this side right here. I'm going to add that bread.
Okay, so that's looking fantastic. All right. I'm going to take some of the Distress ink and just finish these bottom edges. Okay. Hopefully the TV is not too loud in the background. As usual, I am crafting <laughs> with my TV on. I need that extra noise in the background. Now here is this suit, part of the suitcase is going to adhere here. This is going to be the top of it, right? See that? So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. Remove this. Goodness gracious. And here again, I have some paper lifting, right? You see that? That's because I apparently didn't put enough adhes adhesive on the tape, on the paper, when I adhered it to the, um, and what you can do, which I didn't do in the other one, but you always have the option, is add some glue, wet glue, on top of the uh, double-sided tape you have there doesn't really matter on what side you put the top uh, adhere it to so I guess just pick the side that you think this is a really pretty side I'm gonna have that be the front I'm gonna line this up like this right here Just like that. Give that a good press. And looky, looky. This slides in like that. And there's your suitcase, right? Now, of course, you need your handle for your suitcase. And that's this part right here. So, we're going to fold this up. Add some super strong adhesive to the handle. Okay, we'll add adhesive. I'm going to peel this up. Got to make sure that it's, um, there we go. I'm going to add another piece just to completely cover the surface in the double-sided tape because I really want it to stick. I really, really want it to stick. <laughs> so, peel that back. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay, make sure find the side that opens right that's the side that opens and kind of eyeball about where the center is which for me would be about there then I can open this give this a good press now what you can do and what I have done in some of these suitcases is I used a um, just like a sharp little paper, like a, just a sharp object to punch a little hole in the center here. This is an extra step, obviously don't have to do it. This is just something that I do just to give it a more finished touch. I have a brad, a smaller brad of a match to these. I'm gonna slide it in here and it's really going to make sure that it sticks and it gives it a more finished look. Now, what you do have to be careful about, because you don't want this part to get caught up on that brad, um, is when you open this to make sure to really press them back. Make that super flat. Okay, so it doesn't in any way, and I'm going to use this, these scissors to press against it. 
um, impede I mean press it in really good make sure that's really really flat see that inside is flat so it doesn't impede the closing mechanism and there's your suitcase now a finishing touch for me in creating these straps I just took um, a brown piece of cardstock I cut quarter inch strips they are a nine by a quarter of an inch I cut two strips per suitcase right I find that that's the perfect size for the suitcases that lets it wrap around that lets it wrap around and use just enough excess so that you get a nice closure and then on each of those strips, I added like these little paper loops right there. You see that paper loop so that it can go over and keep this closed. Now I'm thinking I might uh, create something a little more permanent um, in terms of a closure, but that's, that's pretty cool right there. Okay, now let me quickly show you how I did the wrap on the quarter inch paper. So here's the quarter inch strip, right? It's a quarter of an inch by nine inches. I take another strip of paper and of course I ink the edges on both. And the way I created this little loop mechanism right here is I just took the strap, took another piece of that strip, and just did like a little wrap around okay not super tight you want it a little bit loose because you, if it's too tight you're not going to be able to slide um, you're not going to be able to slide the paper in it when you do the loop like this okay if it's too tight you're not going to get that that loop that you want so you want it to be a little bit loose I cut it down and then add a little bit of glue to the back. Hopefully this is all focusing. There we go. Right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, handmade, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's what makes it special. Okay, and you have that little hoop, that little loop that when you wrap this around, you can tuck in like that to create like a little belt. See that? Little belt. And then you take that and put it around your suitcase. Put that around your suitcase. And you have these adorable straps for your suitcase. I would tighten that up obviously. Um, you could even adhere one side of the strap down so that the other one when it loops around it won't be so loose. I gotta decide how I want to do that but definitely those are all of the working pieces. I think these are absolutely adorable. Um, you see in the finished product yourself how cute it is. I think this is a great die. Fun to have. Definitely a lot of uses. I'm going to be using this again. How fun would these be actually to create little scenes on the inside um, and send them as gifts to people like a little um, village scene or Christmas scene or whatever the holiday may be and send it off to someone or you know if you have a pen pal you know and you're from New York you can create a little New York scene in here and ship this off to your pen pal how awesome is that so fun die I'm glad I have it um, you can see what I made with it I'm super stoked with the way these purses turned out um, I know my girls are going to love and appreciate them so there you have it Thank you so, so much, my friends, for watching. I truly do appreciate it. And I hope you will visit me again. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.